Newlyweds B and Paul went on their honeymoon. Along the way, they filmed videos for their family archive, reminiscing about their first date and other happy moments. The couple decided to spend this time in B's family cabin in the Canadian woods. It was modest, but the most important thing was that Paul and B were together. She gave her beloved a tour of the house. These were supposed to be the happiest days of their lives. At night, B shared that she was frightened by the silence. As they slept, a bright light began to shine through the window. The next day, the couple continued to enjoy their honeymoon. While they were making breakfast, B suddenly asked her husband if he wanted to have a child. Paul was caught off guard and replied that now was not the time. Neither of them was ready for parenthood, deciding to postpone it. Letting go of all worries, the newlyweds fooled around and then went boating on the lake. Since Paul grew up in the city rather than the countryside, he didn't know that the anchor had to be tied to the boat. Thankfully be caught on in time. There wasn't a soul around the lake. Although the weather was very warm, the water turned out to be icy, so swimming was out of the question. But this did not upset the lovers in the least. Later, they headed to a little restaurant, which although unimpressive in appearance, had a reputation for good food that B had heard about. The restaurant was closed. The owner turned out to be Will, B's childhood friend. They hugged, and B introduced her husband Paul to Will. The old friends chatted a bit. Will shared that he runs the business with his wife, Annie. The restaurant currently needed major repairs. Will had once been a professional hockey player, but that was in the past. Annie arrived and said the guests had to leave right away. Nervously Will explained that his wife wasn't feeling well today, so they really should go. Nonetheless, he was happy to see B, who had grown even more beautiful over the years. The couple returned home along the forest road without lunch. Before bed, Paul noticed that B seemed thoughtful, but she assured him everything was fine. Paul suspected that Will was more than just B's childhood friend. But what was truly troubling her was Annie's strange behavior. Both of them seemed tense. In the end B turned the conversation into a joke, and Paul relaxed. During the night as the couple slept, the electrical appliances in their house began acting strangely. Paul woke up with a sudden urge to fish, thinking it was already morning, but something was off. His alarm clock had tricked him. Maybe the batteries were dead. B was nowhere to be found in the house. Paul searched all the rooms, at first thinking the wife was pranking him, but it quickly became clear that wasn't the case. Paul went outside, continuing his search for B. His panic grew with each passing second. He still hoped B was just playing a joke. Alas, that hope was unfulfilled. Making his way through the forest in the dark, Paul desperately called for his wife and eventually found her disoriented. Paul immediately brought B back home, asking what had happened. B remembered nothing. She was sorry for scaring her husband. Now all Paul wanted was to understand what was going on. B suggested she might be sleepwalking. They hugged, believing that all the bad was behind them. Paul was afraid to leave his wife alone, though she assured that everything was fine. In the morning, Paul once again didn't find her by his side. She was in the kitchen making breakfast. The events of last night already felt unreal. While the husband and wife were embracing, the toast on the stove burned. Paul thought B was still feeling ill. She clearly had trouble concentrating. Paul tried to convince the wife to go to town to see a doctor, but she refused. They tried to forget about the incident, though Paul felt something was wrong. During the day, the couple went boating again. B's behavior was becoming more and more unsettled, and Paul couldn't help but notice. Suddenly to Paul's bewilderment, B jumped straight into the cold water. Back home, he tried to figure out the reason for her action. But B had no explanation. Now she felt tired and stressed. All Paul wanted was to make B happy. When he noticed strange marks on her legs, his concern deepened. B said that perhaps she was bitten by some insect during her sleepwalking episode. Paul intended to take his wife to the hospital, but she no longer wanted to discuss it and went to bed. Taking advantage of this, Paul examined the marks on her body more closely, then went to the place where he had found B disoriented the previous night. There was her nightgown, stained with some kind of substance. Clearly something bad had happened. Back at the cabin, Paul witnessed B talking to her reflection, complaining of a headache and mood swings. The pill hadn't helped. But the worst part was the nasty sensation in her stomach. As B left the bathroom, Paul pretended that everything was fine. In the evening he chopped wood, and the couple roasted marshmallows over the fire. Later, they drank beer and played dice. It seemed everything was back on track, but suddenly B complained that her headache wouldn't go away. This upset Paul, who thought his wife simply didn't want to spend the evening with him. At night, a bright beam once again started shining through the window. Paul who couldn't sleep was frightened. The beam would disappear, then reappear in another spot. Paul grabbed his gun and went to see what was going on. Judging by the rustling in the trees, there was definitely someone outside. Paul fired a warning shot into the air, which woke B. 
In a panic Paul started to curtain all the windows in the house. He thought he was losing his mind, but Paul knew what he'd seen. Most likely on the night B had been sleepwalking, someone had been with her in the forest, and now that person was watching them. No matter how hard B tried, she couldn't remember anything. Paul suspected Will might be involved. This accusation outraged B, who was certain that Will hadn't harmed her. If Paul didn't stop his foolish suspicions, he would ruin their marriage. This night they slept in separate rooms. Actually Paul couldn't sleep, convinced that the unwelcome visitor would return. He couldn't sleep either. In the morning looking frightened, she wrote something in her notebook. There was tension between husband and wife. Paul prepared breakfast, answering B's questions reluctantly. Later, she again tried to start a conversation with him. In turn he asked why the bites on her legs weren't healing. B assured him that it was nothing to worry about. Despite their disagreements, the couple went fishing. Suddenly Paul said he wanted to return to the city. It would be better for both of them. But B didn't want to spend their honeymoon in a noisy city. Last night she hadn't been herself, but she promised it wouldn't happen again. At some point something unusual started happening to B's body. Nevertheless, she still refused to see a doctor, insisting there was nothing abnormal. Not knowing how to influence his wife, Paul went to Annie and Will's house. But Will wasn't there. Annie said he was hiding now. When Paul noticed the same marks on her legs as B's, Annie advised him to stay away from them because they were very dangerous. It could end badly for everyone. Paul didn't understand what that meant. Without further explanation, Annie left on a boat. Paul found Will's cap in the lake. After that, while the owners were gone, he decided to enter their house. The door was unlocked, and the surveillance camera by the entrance didn't stop Paul. Inside it was dark. Paul tried to turn on the light, but the electricity was intermittent. Using Will's computer, Paul accessed the surveillance footage and saw Annie following bright lights in the forest. At that moment the electrical devices began to go crazy. Additionally, Annie had made similar notes to B's. What could all these details mean? As he left, Paul didn't notice a figure behind him. At home, Paul took B's journal and demanded answers about who she really was. B tried to calm the husband, but he insisted she tell him some facts about her life. Trying to pull herself together, B told him where she was born, where she lived, her favorite color and that she had a nut allergy. All these facts were listed in B's journal, and Paul wonders why she did it. The same thing was happening to Annie, even the marks on their legs were identical. Paul wants to know what they saw in the forest. Moreover, he's convinced that Annie did something to Will. B denies that anything is wrong with her, shouting at the husband that she only wants to protect him. Paul was determined to get out of here right now, but he couldn't find the car keys. He began tearing the house apart, missing the moment when B locked herself in the bathroom and started harming herself. Paul broke down the door and tried to subdue the one who looked exactly like his wife, who was really in front of him. He said that she and Annie were forbidden from talking about it to anyone. Paul wanted to take her away from here, but B was adamantly against it. This led to a heated conflict between them. When B tried to break free and attack Paul, he had to tie her up. Paul only wanted things to be okay between him and his wife. But here in the Canadian woods, their lives had turned into a nightmare. Paul knew that in such a situation, his wife would surely be crying. And he was ready to do anything to bring back the love of his life. He kept insisting that she was his wife. To test this, Paul demanded that she tell him where they went on their first date and what dish they ate at their wedding four days ago. B tried to remember some facts, but most of them didn't match reality. Paul knew that although this woman looked like his wife, she was not truly her. B began desperately begging Paul to remove what was inside her. And Paul, overcoming his horror and revulsion, extracted some worm-like creature, tearfully asking her what it was. He couldn't say. She only knew that something terrible had happened to her in this forest. B remembered the light and the dark silhouettes, whose faces she couldn't see. They had used her as an incubator for that creature. Now B felt her body was here, but her consciousness was somewhere far away. Paul tried once more to find the car keys, but B insisted they couldn't leave this place. When Paul was about to go for help, B tried to stop him. Suddenly a bright light struck the window. B realized that those controlling her wanted to get rid of Paul because they didn't need him. B knew she had to hide her beloved where those creatures wouldn't find him, and she knocked him out. Paul regained consciousness tied up in a boat. B said she was saving him this way. After tying an anchor to Paul's legs, B repeated that she wanted to hide him underwater, where those creatures would never find him. In a panic Paul tried to break free, screaming that he wouldn't be able to breathe underwater, but the anchor dragged him to the bottom. Night fell. B's condition rapidly deteriorated, her skin began peeling, and her eyes turned colorless. She watched a video of her wedding with Paul. Suddenly a light flared. Opening the door, B saw Annie on the doorstep. Together they headed into the forest, toward the source of the bright light. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.